The movie begins with Brian Mills, a former Green Beret and CIA officer, attempting to build a relationship with his 17-year-old daughter named Kim, who lives with her mother, his ex-wife Lenore, and her wealthy stepfather Stuart St. John. The next day, Brian arrives at a shop, examines a karaoke machine, and buys it. He then wraps it and gives it to Kim for her 17th birthday because he knows she has wanted to be a professional singer since she was five. When he arrives at the party, the guard is not allowing him to enter, despite him saying that he is Kim's biological father. Lenore then comes and tells him that they are letting the kids have their own spaces and asks him to put the gift with the others. However, Brian insists that he wants to hand it to her himself. Not long after, Kim arrives and opens the present. While he takes a picture of Kim, Stuart shows up with his expensive horse as a birthday present for her. He has a painful expression on his face as Kim flees towards Stuart, leaving his gift behind. Stuart then approaches him, asking him to join them for lunch, but he says he came there to greet Kim with a happy birthday and then leaves. That night, Brian goes home and adds the photo he took to his photo album of Kim. Then, his friends, also former Green Berets, arrive, bringing beer for their small barbecue party. They converse about Kim, Lenore, and Stuart. After the party, one of them, Sam Gilroy, asks him to join a four-hour job of taking the pop diva Shara to and from her concert for $2,500. Brian accepts the job, and his three friends leave. The following evening, Brian attends the job. Sam assigns Brian to keep watch inside the room. Brian then asks Shara for advice on becoming a professional singer before the concert. Realizing his daughter aspires to be like her, she responds that she advises her to pick another career. During the show, Kim contacts Brian, and they talk about the job that he is guarding Shira. As they talk, Kim asks him to meet her for lunch tomorrow after the call. Brian returns to his friends to tell them that Kim was asking him to have lunch, which delights his friends. After the concert, a shamble occurs when someone opens a gate backstage. Brian immediately takes Shira to safety, but he doesn't know someone is waiting to stab Shira. He then saves Shira from a knife-wielding attacker and heads to a car. While in the car, he offers Shira a soda to take the edge off the shock and comforts her. Back in the hotel, Brian meets with his friends for his pay, to which Sam tries to convince him to join them, for he still has the edge. Later, Shira wants to meet him. She gives him a card with two phone numbers containing his vocal coach and her manager in case his daughter wishes to try out for a singing career to repay him for saving her. The next day, Brian sits at the restaurant holding a card Shira gave him. Kim arrives with Lenore which surprises him because he thinks it is just the two of them who will be having dinner. Kim tells him that she is planning a vacation to Paris with her friend Amanda but because she is under 18, she requires permission from his father to leave the country. She then tries to convince him, and Lenore pulls out the paper, telling him not to make it a big deal and sign the document. On the other hand, Brian refuses, stating that the world is too dangerous for a 17-year-old girl to travel alone. He then suggests that he go along. When Lenore disagrees with his suggestion, he says he will think about it, which disappoints Kim and prompts her to leave before he tells her the news about Shira. Lenore then tells him that he sacrificed their marriage to save the country and made a mess of his life in service of the country, but he can't sacrifice a little for Kim. He replies that he is willing to sacrifice anything for Kim but is uncomfortable putting her at risk. Later, Brian goes to their house and tells Kim that he is granting her permission but with three conditions. He says he wants the address and phone number of where she's staying, and that if she moves, he wants to know where and with whom she will be staying. In addition, he requires her to call him when they land and every night before she goes to sleep. Then, he hands Kim an international phone where his phone number is saved. Lastly, he says that he will take her to the airport. Kim, delighted that he had signed the papers, immediately calls Amanda. On their drive to the airport, he hands Kim a list of places in Paris that she should avoid. She then assures him that they will spend most of their time in museums and that his job made him paranoid but Brian opposes, saying that his career made him aware. She then asks him what his job was that he was always away before, and he explains that he was a preventer, someone who prevents bad things from happening. When they arrive at the airport, Brian learns that Kim lied. He discovers that Kim and Amanda are not only going to Paris, instead, they are planning to travel around Europe. He then talks to Lenore about this, and she says that she knows about it, and Kim didn't tell him because she can't be honest with him. Lenore then says they plan to follow the U2 European tour, which makes him furious. She tells him to let Kim live before she leaves, or he will lose her. Upon arriving at the Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris, they meet a handsome young stranger named Peter who offers to take a picture of them. Peter then asks them where they are from and offers to share a taxi. 
On the other hand, Bryant is checking on the flight status, to which he discovers that they have already landed at the airport, and Kim didn't call him. Later, Kim and Amanda go to Amanda's cousin's apartment, where Kim finds out the cousins are in Spain. Because Amanda is attracted to Peter, she confidently gives Peter the details of their apartment, despite Kim telling her to be cautious since they don't know him. Meanwhile, Peter calls someone and says he has a target of two American girls aged 18 years old staying in an apartment on the fifth floor. When the two get inside the house, Amanda turns on the speakers and the two start partying. On the other hand, Brian calls Kim several times, but she does not answer. So, Brian calls Lenore, and she convinces him to stay calm and give her some space. However, he keeps calling until Kim finally answers. He says he is worried that the phone he gave him had problems because she was supposed to call him when they landed. However, Kim says that it was just the rush in the airport. So, he asks for the number of where they are staying, as one of the conditions. When he asks to talk with one of the cousins, Kim says that she didn't know they were in Spain. During the call, Kim sees men enter the apartment. She then says someone is there, and Brian thinks the cousins are back. But when she says they got Amanda and took her, he records the conversation as quickly as possible. While doing so, he asks if they met anyone on the plane or at the airport, and she says they met Peter, who knows where they are staying. When the men are approaching, he instructs Kim to stay focused and hold it together. He then asks how many people are there and tells her to go to the next bedroom and hide under the bed. Then. He says they will take her but she will have 5 to 10 critical seconds. So, he instructs her to leave the phone on the floor and shout everything she sees about them. She follows her father's instructions. When the two men drag her out of hiding, she shouts, beard, 6 feet, and a tattoo on the right hand, moon and star. Brian then hears someone breathing on the phone. He tells the listener that he doesn't know who he is and what they want, that if they are looking for ransom, he doesn't have money but has a particular set of skills. He tells the listener that he will not pursue the kidnappers if they release his daughter, but warns them that if they refuse to accept his offer, it will result in their deaths. The listener only replies, good luck, and then terminates the call. Later, Brian rushes to Stort's house to deliver the bad news that Kim has been kidnapped. While on his way, he calls Sam to analyze the recording. When he arrives at Stort's house, he asks him if he has enemies overseas. When Stuart answers no, he immediately looks for Kim's room. He then tells Stuart to get his plane ready to fly to Paris as soon as possible. At the same time, Sam, an old friend and former colleague of Brian, informs that the kidnappers speak Albanian. Based on their accents and dialects, they must be from Tripoja. This place is ground zero for scammers. He also adds that the one Brian spoke to is named Marco Haja, whom they have information as the mob boss who moved to Paris about six months ago. In addition, he says that the tattoo is a group ID, and that the specialty of the groups coming out of this area is trafficking women. Once they smuggle the women, they will addict them to drugs and turn them into prostitutes. Based on previous history, Kim must be found within 96 hours or she will likely be lost forever. Brian immediately flies to Paris and breaks into the apartment. There, he tries to recreate what happened. When he notices Kim's broken phone, he takes the memory card and discovers Peter's reflection in a photo. Furthermore, he finds Peter at the airport trying to charm a female traveler. So, Brian tries to apprehend him and takes him inside the taxi. He asks him about the two American girls from yesterday, but Peter keeps saying he doesn't know. A man pulls Brian out of the taxi, and when he knocks the man, he sees Peter escaping. Peter jumps over a bridge and gets killed by an oncoming truck. With his only lead dead, Brian turns to an old contact, a former French intelligence agent named Agent Jean-Claude Petrol, who now has a desk job. Jean informs him of the local red light district where the Albanian prostitution ring operates but warns him not to get involved. After hearing this, Brian hires an Albanian English translator. When he arrives at Port de Cliché, he approaches one of the prostitutes and annoys her until someone comes over and tells him to leave. Brian agrees but also installs an eavesdropping device to hear what they are talking about. He hears that they are speaking Albanian. When he listens, so he asks the translator to translate it. The translator then translates everything they say until Brian hits a hint about a construction site. Brian immediately follows them only to discover that the location is a prostitution den. At night, Brian searches a makeshift brothel in a construction yard. He rescues a drugged in woman wearing Kim's denim jacket. After a gunfight and a high-speed chase with the brothel's operators, Brian takes the woman to a hotel where he improves her detoxification. 
The next day, Jean calls and requests Brian to flee French since he was causing too much chaos. During the call, Jean quietly instructs his men to track Brian's whereabouts. However, Brian needs to be more clever for Jean to find. Meanwhile, the woman Brian had saved earlier has awoken. He then questions her about how she obtained Kim's jacket and discovers another clue to the root apparatus. After posing as deputy director of internal security using Jean's name card, he enters the house under the pretense of renegotiating the police protection rate. When he identifies Marco for tricking him into saying good luck, the meeting erupts into a fight resulting in the deaths of several gangsters, except for Marco. After finding various heavily drugged girls in Amanda's body, he tortures Marco with electricity. Marco then reveals that virgins like Kim have high value in the black market and are quickly sold before identifying the buyer as crime syndicate Patrice St. Clair. Brian leaves Marco to die from continuous electrocution. Some time later, Brian visits Jean's apartment. Having discovered Jean's corruption, he wounds the latter's wife to coerce him into disclosing Patrice's location before knocking him out. Later that night, Brian enters a party disguised as a police officer. Inside one of the rooms, he informs security that he is looking for Patrice, but the guard tells him that his name is not on the list and that he cannot pass. So, Bryant is forced to hit the security until he collapses. Then, he disguises himself as a waiter and walks to one of the bidding chambers at the auction. Brian forces Ollie, one of the bidders, to purchase come at any price. Later, someone smacks Brian's head from behind as he exits the room, knocking him out. When Patrice learns who he is, he orders his henchmen to kill him. But Brian breaks loose and kills them all. Patrice then reveals that they took him to a yacht owned by a man named Drummond before Brian shoots him repeatedly. Brian then pursues the yacht and eliminates the bodyguards, including Ollie, before he finds Raman in his suite holding Kim at knife point. When Raman attempts to negotiate, Brian kills him with a headshot and saves her. Kim is overcome with emotion as she realizes her father has traveled a long distance to save her. The next day, they are back home in the United States. The movie ends with Brian surprising Kim by taking her to visit Shira, who wants to hear Kim's. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.